what we have proven is that in the infinite width limit, uh, uh, the neural network um, behaves almost like uh, kernel methods, but with a specific kernel which depends on the structure of the network. This is Arthur Jacob, a PhD student in mathematics at EPFL. And in a previous video, we discussed how in a recent NeurIPS paper, Arthur and his co-authors managed to map a neural network architecture with a kernel that is a way to compute a similarity between different high-dimensional objects like images. But an important caveat of their work so far was that their analysis only applied to so-called fully connected neural networks. Uh, for the moment, we'll have only studied uh, fully connected neural network. And so fully connected neural network, they really kind of uh, only uh, take into account the, um, the, the distance between two, two images, so the standard Euclidean distance, so it's not very interesting. So maybe that's why uh, it's very rare to use, rare to use uh, fully connected neural networks with images. But actually already we, have, we are looking into what kind of kernel uh, a convolutional neural network uh, uh, corresponds to. In brief, convolutional neural networks are network architectures that are somewhat inspired from the mammal visual cortex. Their performance for image analysis have been key to many of the most spectacular recent advances in AI. And the kernel that corresponds to a convolutional uh, neural network has a, is related to this uh, hierarchical kernel. So that, that kernel who will take two images and will uh, compare first two small part of the images, every small part of the images, and uh, and then inside this small part of the image, we'll again uh, compare all the smaller images and so on. And it's if you add some pooling, then you will have some kind of uh, fuzziness where it will compare, for example, one image with the, the same at the same point, but also with nearby uh, images. So you can kind of have this uh, invariance under small deformation of the images. So, so, so in terms of kernels, in terms of, of the dissimilarity, it will mean that if you, have, you take two images and one, the two are pretty different, but actually one of them is just a deformation of the other, then the a convolutional kernel will give you a small, uh, will give you a high similarity because it, it is able to recognize that it's actually uh, a, a deformation. And even though maybe it's possible sometimes some kind of deformation could create some big distance in terms of Euclidean distance, but the convolutional kernel would be smarter than that and recognize this kind of uh, deformation. And of course, you want, if you were trying to, uh, to, to classify images, you would want to, to be uh, robust against deformations and so on. So. so basically, we might get insight into the usefulness of the convolutional neural network architecture by better understanding what kernel it corresponds to, and in particular, what natural symmetries of images are encoded into the kernel of convolutional neural networks. We first apply convolution, then we apply ReLU, or any kind of activation, and then we apply pooling. And we repeat that, that's a, that's a single block, three operations in a single convolutional block. Okay, so convolution, reloop, pooling, repeat. Convolution, reloop, pooling, repeat. Convolution, reloop, pooling. Eigenvalues and eigenfunctions of this uh, linear uh, um, differential equation are the kernel principal components of the data, of the data set that you have with respect to this neural, neural tangent kernel. 